Coming up on Mountain News This Morning, Kentuckians have the chance to receive more funding to help keep their houses warm. And fire officials give some tips on how to keep you and your loved ones safe while warming up your home during the winter months. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Chas Gayhart. It is 632 on Tuesday, January 11th. Let's go back over and check in with my buddy Brandon again. Good morning. Good morning to you. How is it going over there? How are you? I'm good. Can't yeah, complain. It's going all right. Got a little bit of a delay, so a little bit of communication mm -hmm. issue. That's okay. We'll, we'll <laughs> I know that seems out so there strange. Bit, but that's all right. That's right, exactly. I might have to take, have them take the delay down a little bit more. But anyway, you'll see outside as we go to Pikeville this morning on US 119, US 23. Things are fairly quiet over there. Traffic stopped at the light, but now the light has turned, and now they're moving along again this morning as you head through the first part of your day. Temperatures continue to get colder. We're seeing more teens showing up instead of those low 20s, but still 23 in Jacksboro, 20 in Harlan, 21 in Middlesboro, and 21 in Hazard. Those are the only folks who are still in the 20s this morning. Everybody else is in the teens. 38 this afternoon with some sunshine. It's going to warm up quickly. And then as we go into the afternoon, going into the nighttime hours, dropping into the 20s. So not as cold tonight. Still a chilly night, but not as cold as it has been. Chas? Thanks, Brandon. The Hazard community is mourning the death of a former Hazard High School superintendent. Our media partner, WSGS, reported the death of Fred Stidham. The report said Stidham died on Monday. He coached football at Hazard High School for 15 years and coached as head coach for two years. Stidham was the principal at the high school for seven years and was later named superintendent. Stidham leaves behind his wife, Renee. They were married for 29 years. A Kentucky Sheriff's Office is mourning the loss of one of its own. Morgan County Deputy Alex Spencer died during the weekend. Deputies are calling his death a tragic accident. Spencer's his death is hitting the close-knit community hard. Morgan County Coroner Raymond Van Cleve also got to know Spencer through work, and he says this will hurt him for a quite a while. I worked cases with Alex, and he was a fine deputy, and he'll be missed in his community. Everybody knows Alex. Friends say Spencer always wanted to be a part of the law enforcement and was set to graduate from training on February 3rd. Spencer leaves behind a wife and two young boys. A person was killed Monday morning in Lawrence County along US 23 involving a tractor trailer. Troopers say the driver of a car was hit by the semi when they turned onto State Route 3398. The driver of the semi truck was then taken to a hospital. Officials say that semi truck driver did not show any serious injuries. Five apartments are either damaged or destroyed after Richmond police say the building was intentionally set on fire during the weekend. Police say they were in a standoff with Logan Browning, who had been shooting at officers from inside one of the units after a domestic dispute. We've now learned crews had difficulty fighting the fire because the nearby hydrant was not working. Chad Hedrick has been asking questions because this is not the first time this hydrant was out of service when it was needed. Here you go. Kelly Isaacs and her family are packing up their lives. Our emotions are everywhere. I mean, we're left shocked. We really know where to go. Their home for the last year and a half damaged by a fire police say was intentionally set. Four other families are also without a place to call home. It's heartbreaking because this is this was my home, you know, and not being able to come here anymore, having to go stay with other people was just heartbreaking. While Kelly puts her belongings in a U-Haul, she's frustrated knowing a fire hydrant not 100 yards from her building at Richmond Manor wasn't functioning as flames tore through. The same thing happened in September 2019 when a fire at the same complex spread because a hydrant was not working. Then we were told hydrants were inspected every five years and it appeared the hydrant was damaged after it was inspected. And with more than 1,000 hydrants in the service, 
service area, it wasn't possible to guarantee that each of them is functioning in real time. I think that they should have at least, you know, made sure they were working from the last fire that happened a few years ago. Richmond Mayor Robert Blythe says Madison County Utilities is responsible for upkeep of the hydrant as it is in their district. They don't report to the city, even though the apartments are in city limits. He's hoping to get all agencies together to address shortcomings to ensure safety. With respect to those fire hydrants, that maybe some of those who are responsible for that district would catch on and would go ahead and, and take the initiative uh, to do something, but uh, that's not been the case thus far. At least I'm not aware that it has been. And of course, I think it showed up this time that that has not been the case. Because if they would have done that, it would have spread it all the way to these over here by us. Attorney General Daniel Cameron is urging FCC officials to adopt measures to reduce illegal international robocalls. 51 other attorneys general are joining in on the measure. Attorney General Cameron claims that the foreign calls scam Kentuckians in losing thousands of dollars. He is suggesting FCC workers to implement stir or shaken anti-robocall protocols that allows callers to know when a spoof call is coming in. U.S. Representative John Yarmuth says Kentucky will receive more than double its annual investment to help families afford energy costs. He says it's a result of a federal pandemic assistance package. Yarmouth said more than $113 million in funding was secured for Kentucky through the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program. That program was made through the American Rescue Plan and annual appropriations process. The investment will help families struggling with home heating costs. Fire officials are giving some tips on how to keep you and your family safe while you keep your house warm this winter. But home fires are preventable. Officials recommend space heaters to be three feet away from anything that can burn. Choose one that has a thermostat and overheat protection with a seal from a qualified testing lab and automatically shuts off and turn them off and unplug them when you leave or go to the bed. There are other home fire dangers as well. Making sure you've got two ways to exit every room in your home. You want to select a meeting spot uh, for everybody to gather that is a safe distance away from your home. The American Red Cross says to also make sure your children know what a smoke alarm sounds like so they know what to do if they ever hear it. Farmer appreciation projects across Kentucky are receiving grants totaling more than $70,000. The funds will allow the state agency to expand on its campaign to support healthy lives on farms. Officials said the project focuses on mental and physical health of farmers by increasing awareness, normalizing discussion of the topic, reducing the stigma of seeking help, and showing farmer appreciation. The 44 applications were reviewed by a committee and 16 were awarded funds. Those wanting to upgrade their beekeeping skills have something to look forward to this weekend. The 12th annual beekeeping school is back in Perry County. Hosted virtually again, everyone is welcome to attend the Zoom call and learn directly from experts in the craft. Extension agent Charles May says moving forward, they might implement a hybrid class. Be able to do in person and then have it set up so people can watch it and interact maybe at home if they don't want to or don't feel comfortable about attending an in-person one. So maybe try to do that. May says he wants to thank everyone continuing to show interest in the class. Six forty here on this Tuesday morning, and then there were three: Hazard, Middlesboro, Jacksboro. Everybody else is in the teens this morning, with Irvin being the coldest at fifteen, Hazard's at twenty-one, along with Middlesboro, Jacksboro at twenty-three. So it is going to be a frosty start to the day out there. Out the door forecast, it will get better. Sunshine will push us up into the upper thirties later today, and then we have a warming trend over the next couple of days. But then. Things will start to crash as we see the possibility for several wintry type systems coming into play as we head toward the weekend. Jess. Thanks, Brandon, and thank you for joining us. The time is now 641. Still to come on Mountain News this morning. A convicted killer loses his life while serving time behind prison bars.